Being a new parent, I'm too poor to buy cool new gadgets. Good thing I have rich customers. In this video, I'll be building the Proton R using the DJI FPV system. A customer sent me all the parts to build the quad for him. There's a ton of review videos on the DJI FPV system, but I couldn't find any good build videos, so I figured I'd make one. First, let's talk about the parts and demystify the DJI FPV system. To make things easier to understand, we'll break this quad down into two parts. The basic quad and the DJI FPV part. The basic quad is what we're used to. Frame, motors, ESC, and flight controller. The DJI FPV system is comprised of the air unit, the camera, the goggles, and the optional transmitter. The air unit is the video transmitter with the built-in DVR and the radio receiver for the DJI transmitter. The DJI system comes in two configurations, the DJI Experience Combo and the DJI Fly More Combo. The Experience Combo comes with the goggles and two of the air units. The combo is for people who already have working quads bound to their Tyrannus or Spectrum radios but want to use the HD goggles and the HD camera. You can use the air unit and goggles without using the DJI controller. The Fly More package comes with the goggles, one air unit, and the transmitter. And this is the combo that I got from the customer. Like all the DJI products, the fit and finish of the goggles are excellent. The goggles are plastic, but it feels really solid without any flex or creaking when you hold it. The goggles come with a battery cable, USB-C to micro USB cable, four antennas that screw right into the goggles, head strap, and carry bag. All the buttons and switches have a really solid, nice tactile feeling. The air unit and camera was actually a lot smaller than I expected. The case on the air unit is aluminum and has a built-in DVR and SD slot. It comes with the air unit, the camera, two antennas, and the wire harness. The transmitter actually feels really nice. I love the built-in rubber finger grips on the back of the transmitter. These rubber grips can be removed to access the gimbal adjustments, unlike the Tyrannus where you have to open up the entire transmitter just to get to the gimbals. The gimbals feel really good and the sticks have height adjustment by twisting them and locking them into place. The switches are a little small compared to the Tyrannus, but I'm sure you could get used to it. With the buttons, you can access the menu and change the VTX settings, menu settings, or any other settings for the quad. To assemble the Proton R, just slide the arms into the channels and screw them in. Because of the hybrid geometry built into the frame, the front and rear arm screw hole distances are different. Just make sure the little arrow on the bottom plate is pointing to the front of the quad. Here I'm using M3 by 16 mm screws for the stack. This will allow for an ultra low ESC and flight controller stack and allow you to use 30 mm standoffs. But in this build, I'm actually using 35 mm because I ran out of 30 mm standoffs. To keep the ESC off the metal aluminum plate, I'm using butter mounts and just cutting them, cutting them in half and putting them on the stack screws so the ESC is not sitting on the metal. Next, just mount the motors on the frame. I'm using gaffer's tape to tape the motor wires flat on the arms. Keeping the motor wires flat on the arms prevents them from getting chopped up by the props. Before we solder the motor wires onto the ESCs, make sure you pre-tin the wires and the pads on the ESC. This makes it easier to get a clean, strong solder joint. Whenever I'm soldering motor wires onto the ESC, I always like to melt the solder on the ESC first and then push the wire into the melted ESC. The battery cable is usually a bigger gauge wire, so it's really important to pre-tin the, the wire and the 
the battery pad before soldering it. On the T-Motor F4 flight controller, I'll be using the power pad from the camera, so I selected the V-Bat jumper. Solder the red power wire to V-Bat, the black wire goes to ground, the gray wire goes to any free RX UR port, the white wire goes to any free TX UR. On this board, I'm using UR6. The brown wire goes to any ground pad. Connect the yellow wire to the S bus pad. On this board, I'm using RX5. Using the T-Motor ESC and flight controller stack, the harness is a direct plug-in from the ESC to FC. I designed a custom antenna mount for the Proton R using the recommended specs from DJI, 60 degrees between the two antennas and about 40 millimeters away from the frame. I also made a fixed 40 degree camera mount for the HD camera that fits directly onto this frame. Plug in the unit, mount the camera and the antennas. And I used some heavy duty double sided Gorilla Tape to secure the air unit to the top plate. Before you use the DJI FPV, the goggles, air unit, and transmitter need to be activated. Just follow the instructions on the DJI video. To bind the air unit to the transmitter, power up the air unit. Once the LED turns green, press the bind button and it'll turn red. Turn on the transmitter. When the LED turns red, press the record, right wheel, and the C button at the same time. The LED will turn blue, then turn solid green when it's bound. Next, bind the goggles. Power up the air unit. When the LED turns green, press the bind button to turn it red. Power up the goggles and let it do the boot sequence and then press the bind button. Once it's bound, you'll see video in your goggles. Next we'll flash the flight controller. I'm using the T-Motor F4, so I'll just select the T-Motor F4 target and then the 4.0.5 target. Hit flash. I had a problem flashing mine, so I had to put the flight controller in the DFU mode. To put the flight controller in DFU mode, just unplug the USB, press the bind button, and then plug the USB back in. And then on the top, you'll see it say DFU, and then you can flash your flight controller. I have the S bus connected to UART5, so enable Serial RX for UART5. The air unit is connected to UART6, so enable MSP for UART6. This allows the air unit to make changes on the flight controller, such as PIDs. On the configurations tab, I'm just going to reverse motor direction, go to DSHOT 600, just change the motor idle to 4, 8K, arming 180. And then just make sure you have S bus selected. I'm going to turn off the OSD because we're not using Betaflight OSD. I'm going to enable the motor beep. On pit tuning, all I'm going to do is change the rates to what I normally fly. Once you power up your transmitter, you'll see your sticks moving around in the receivers tab. 
Even though you can assign the switches in the DJI menu, I'm just gonna do it in the modes tab because I'm already here and that's what I'm used to. And I find it a lot easier to do it this way than kind of fumbling around through the DJI menu. And in the motors tab, just do like you would any other build, just spin up each individual motor and make sure they're spinning in the correct direction. And if they aren't, just go into BL Holly 32 and reverse any motors you need to. Seeing the footage in this DVR doesn't do the goggles any justice. The actual FPV feed look way better than it does here. The HD FPV feed almost doesn't look real, it was so clear. Just for comparison, here's what a normal DVR looks like through some Fast Shark Dominator V3s. The super clear video looked so good, it was almost distracting. Since this is a customer's quad, this is really only the second battery it flew, so there's zero tuning except for changing the rates and using a brand new transmitter I've never used before. The gimbals were much looser and shorter than what I'm used to. I'm sure with a tuned quad and gimbal adjustments, I could grow to really love this setup. As far as latency, I couldn't tell if it was just flying a brand new quad with a transmitter that I've never used before, or just the shock of video this clear. It didn't feel as crisp or comfortable as my normal quad, but it wasn't a deal breaker at all. As far as using the DJI FPV system for racing, Unless you have a DJI FPV heat, you won't be able to race with other quads flying on Fat Shark or race bands. My goggle was using channel 7, but the lap timer was picking up on race band 8. Not sure why, but unless that gets sorted, you can't race with others on race band. So would I recommend the DJI FPV system? Yes and no. If you're wanting to use the system for racing with others, I'd say no, because it doesn't work as of right now. I'm sure they'll get get everything sorted out in the future but right now it won't work but if you mostly fly by yourself freestyle or long range with some buddies this would be something i'd definitely take a look at hope you found this video helpful and consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already and make sure you click the little bell icon to be notified when new videos are released thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one